teachers, the curriculum, the methodology, the students, the structure of the, the, the actual schools are the same. Rather, they may be totally opposite. One school may be excellent versus the other one may be very bad. So sharing the title does not indicate that the essence is identical. This is the same thing as Ibn Abbas, which was a companion of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, said when he was describing paradise. He said the only thing that is common between paradise and what we have in this world is the name. We have trees in this world and Allah mentioned trees in paradise. But the essence of these trees is, is, is nothing the same. Nothing similar. The only thing that is common is the title. This is called the tree and that is called the tree. Likewise, and on these premises, we want to understand these particular pillars of faith. So let us come with me and let's open our minds and see what both belief systems teach. And this is really our main objective. What does the belief system teach? And based on this evaluation, which one do we prefer? Which one we think is suitable for us to meet our Lord with? Because at the end of the day, it's a decision made. Which one would be the one that we will dare to stand in front of God on the Day of Judgment with that particular belief system? Based on our evaluation of what the essence of both the, two, six, the six pillars of faith available in both religions or ways of life. Beginning, first and foremost, with the statement of the Prophet Muhammad to believe in Allah. Although it's common among all the religions in the world to believe in God, you will find that the essence though is totally different. In Hinduism, you know, they have one main God which may manifest in many different things and many different idols, many different statues, so much so that anything can become a God. In Buddhism, it may manifest in the statue of Buddha, who was worshipped besides Allah. Uh, in Christianity, the concept of God is somewhat ambiguous. It's really not, there's no clarity. If, if we were to compare the biblical texts with the explanation of some of the priests and the individuals, uh, the average person who may be an atheist trying to be converted to this particular religion may not really have a clear understanding of who God is at the end of the day. Is it the Father, or is it Jesus, or is Jesus a God, or only the Son of God, or a God and a Son of God, or is it the Father only who is, you know, handling the business of the world and Jesus being uh, a particular Savior only. So you really cannot leave with, with clarity. Um, unlike Islam, where the definition of God, actually the whole Qur'an, or at least a third of the Qur'an, speaks about Allah. This is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions, is one of you unable to recite one third of the Qur'an in one night? They said, it's difficult, the Messenger of Allah. How are we going to do that? He said, Allahu Ahad, which is a surah, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Say it is Allah the one who is unique. Allah the self-sufficient, the absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yurad. He did not beget, nor was he begotten, and he has none equal to him. The reason why the scholars say this particular chapter is equal to one third of the Quran, because it does not contain any rulings, it does not contain any historical facts or scientific or the, or the likes. It is strictly about Allah. And when they, did, when they looked into the whole Qur'an, they found that one third of the Qur'an is speaking strictly about Allah. Another third is about the rulings and the regulations. And another is about the events that happened in the past or those that would happen in the future. From the time of Adam up until the actual day of judgment and heaven and hell. Everything has been mentioned in detail in one third of the Qur'an. So, the concept of God is clear. What significant difference between Islamic Christianity and the concept of God, besides the difference which we discussed last week about the issue of Jesus being the Messiah, uh, slash God, slash the Son of God, versus being the Messenger of God in Islam, we have the actual understanding of the names and attributes of Allah. And again, when I say Allah, I'm referring to the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the God of everything. And this is just the Arabic uh, pronoun, a uh, proper noun, excuse me, the Arabic pr proper noun, for Allah for God subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in Islam that Allah has the ultimate name 
qualities and attributes. And that He is the most perfect in every way, shape or form. In all of His names and attributes, Allah has the ultimate perfection. Whereas the creation of Allah consistently seem to be deficient in their names and attributes, in their attributes and qualities. For instance, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبٍ And verily we have created the heavens and the earth and everything that is between them in six days and no fatigue touched us. Fatigue is being tired. Being tired. Now obviously this is consistent with what we believe about Allah. That the Creator cannot possibly get tired. And the scholars say that the, the reason among the reasons why this particular verse was revealed is because of the teachings that are available in Judaism and Christianity. And in this case it's available in Exodus uh, chapter 31 verse 17. It says, for in six days, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh he rested and was refreshed. Pay attention with me for a little bit here. In six days, God created the heavens and the earth, and according to their belief system, it was tiring, it was exhausting, where God had to recuperate. He had to be refreshed. He had to rest. This, in essence, is blasphemy. Again, those who are advised before not to watch, then here comes some of the reasons why. Because when we make the Creator similar to His creation, then we have destroyed the whole concept of faith. We have destroyed the boundaries that were set by God. We have transgressed against them and we have went way beyond the limitations that were given to us. As soon as a human being dares to attribute a quality of God to the creation in the ultimate sense, or the quality of the creation to God, then this person no longer has a religion, no longer has a belief in God. Because the whole basis of God and belief in God is magnifying God. The majestic, the powerful, the one who has none, none equal to him. So this particular variation in the belief is fundamental. Because if you may want to have a God that gets tired, and then you really have an issue with the essence of the God you're worshipping, because you become like him. You work hard, after you, some of you working here, working somewhere else, after you work for a long day, what do you naturally need to do? You need to rest. Because of the deficiency that we have as human beings, the need to rest after a long day of work. So if you say that God created the heavens and earth in six days, then he had to rest, then you're making God equal to his creation. And that is depriving him of his absolute qualities. The perfection and the qualities. What is perfection? Not being deficient. So this is very crucial for us to understand. This, among many other things which I will not elaborate on, are among the major differences that we have in our belief in God. This is why the whole, is the whole religion or the way of life of Islam is based on the foundation that our belief in Allah is that He is absolute in every way, shape, or form. He is self-sufficient. He is independent in everything, is depending on Him. Allah is independent of everyone and all of the creation depend on Allah. He is absolute and He has none equal to Him. This is the only true definition of God. Because we cannot define God, God must define Himself to us. God is the one who defines. We don't know. Allah says in the Quran, Ayat al Kursi, and they do not encompass any of His knowledge except with what He wills. We have no knowledge of God except what God has allowed us to know. So we cannot fabricate or attribute to God something that contradicts 